Good morning, this is Kyle Viola coming at you with another video of Coffee and Jesus. Here we go. Good coffee. All right. So we are going to continue our study in the book of John, chapter 11. I'm going to read mainly from the Passion Translation. And, you know, I make this so that it can be easy to digest. Sometimes I know people have a hard time sitting there reading. So I'm going to, I'm reading for you and it's a whole series and you can literally just sit and listen or read along. Uh, but it's so, it's, it's good to hear the word of God. So I just want to make this available uh, for those who, you know, are watching this in my circle, whoever this extends to and for the future. So this video is just going to be on YouTube forever. So anyways, John chapter 11, Passion Translation. In the village of Bethany, there was a man named Lazarus and his sisters, Mary and Martha. Mary was the one who would anoint Jesus' feet with costly perfume and dry his feet with her long hair in the future, future tense. One day, Lazarus became very sick to the point of death. So his sisters sent a message to Jesus. Lord, our brother Lazarus, the one you love, is very sick. Please come. So... I'm assuming it was it was a little far away, so it wasn't just next door and Jesus was right there. Uh, so they had to send a message out to him. When he heard this, he said, This sickness will not end in death for Lazarus, but will bring glory and praise to God. This will reveal the greatness of the Son of God by what takes place. Now remember, I've talked in previous videos that Jesus said that he only speaks what the father is speaking and does what the father's doing so what he just did right there he prophesied about what was going to take place uh and he's he's speaking into that lazarus is not going to die um, but it's going to bring glory and praise to god and it's for the revelation of the son of god so the message is sent back now even though jesus loved mary martha and lazarus he remained there where he was for two more days so he did not leave his place he did not go outside of god's will he he stayed in there he waited on god the father to tell him what to do and when to do it finally on the third day he said to his disciples come it's time to go to bethany hmm, three days i wonder what the significance of that is but teacher they said to him do you really want to go back there it was just a short time ago the people of Judea were going to stone you. Also, this is the same place that I'm, I'm guessing this was actually the place where he uh, he opened the eyes of the blind and then he come, came to deal with the religious people and they wanted to stone him. So he's going back into the fire there. Jesus replied, are there not 12 hours of daylight in every day? You can go through a day without the fear of stumbling. When you walk in the when you walk in the one who gives light to the world but you will stumble when the light is not in you for you'll be walking in the dark now why does jesus say that he there's something significant in everything that jesus says uh, but he's talking about the light and really he is the light walking in him and if you if you are walking in him you can't stumble because you have light you can see where you're walking but when you're in the dark it is easy to stumble. Then Jesus added, Lazarus, our friend has just fallen asleep. It's time that I go and awaken him. Again, very significant. He's talking about being asleep versus dead. And you know, this is a, this is a euphemism. This is actually, this is John eleven eleven. A lot of people are into the numerology. Eleven eleven. Well, this is your sign right here. Eleven eleven. Sleeping is is a, a, a euphemism um i'm just reading the footnote lazarus sleeping means that he has died to awaken him means that jesus would raise him from the dead so you know people talk about being woke but the real the reality is we need to be awakened from our sleep um and it's not just a uh just a physical death but a spiritual resurrection we need to be awakened in the spirit awakened to jesus when they heard this, the disciples replied, Lord, if he has just fallen asleep, then he'll get better. Jesus was speaking about Lazarus's death, 
but the disciples presumed he was talking about natural sleep. Of course, again, goes back to us people. We look at things in earthly terms with their earthly mindedness. But Jesus always takes it another notch. He's always speaking from the spirit, the spiritual reality. The spiritual reality is that Lazarus is, is sleeping. And then Jesus made it plain to them, Lazarus is dead. Okay, so now he points it out. And for your sake, I'm glad I wasn't there. Because now you have another opportunity to see who I am so that you will learn to trust in me. Come, let's go and see him. So Thomas, nicknamed the twin, remarked to the other disciples, let's go so that we can die with him. So they thought they were on their, uh, on death row they, because of the other people that wanted to stone Jesus. They thought that they were going to get stoned too. Again, thinking with earthly mindedness, not trusting Jesus, even his own disciples was not fully trusting Jesus. Jesus had to prove to them that they can trust him. Now, Jesus goes up, goes ahead. Now, when they arrived at Bethany, which was only about two miles from Jerusalem, Jesus found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Many friends of Mary and Martha had come from the region to console them over the loss of their brother. And when Martha heard that Jesus was approaching the village, she went out to meet him, but Mary stayed in the house. Martha said to Jesus, My Lord, if only you had come sooner, my brother wouldn't have died. But I know that if you were to ask God for anything, he would do it for you. So Martha is now making a, a distinction between Jesus and the Father. He, she's saying, oh, if you ask God to do anything, I know that he would do it for you. This is how Jesus replied. Jesus told her, your brother will rise and live. That's a very strong statement. He's not saying like an if, it's like he's going to live. She replied, yes, I know he will rise with everyone else on resurrection day. Martha, Jesus said, you don't have to wait until then. I am the resurrection and I am life eternal. Now, when he says I am, that's actually showing the deity of Jesus Christ. Jesus is actually re referring back to when God showed up with to Moses in the burning bush and says, I am. Jesus is saying, I am the resurrection. I am life eternal. Anyone who clings to me in faith, even though he dies, will live forever. And the one who lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? So anyone who believes in Jesus will never die. There's still a physical death, but there's a spiritual awakening. There is a resurrection. Jesus is that resurrection. And he puts it back on all of us. Do you believe this? Then Martha replied, yes, Lord, I do. I've always believed that you are the anointed one, the son of God who has come into the world for us. Then she left and hurried off to her sister Mary and called her aside from all the mourners and whispered to her, the master is here and he's asking for you. Jesus particularly was asking for Mary. So when Mary heard this, she quickly went off to find him. For Jesus was lingering outside the village at the same spot where Mary, Martha, met him. Now look at that. Jesus was actually waiting for Mary. Something very special about that. But Mary stopped what she was doing, and she went after Jesus. Now, when Mary's friends, who were comforting her, noticed how quickly she ran out of the house, they followed her, assuming she was going to the tomb of her brother to mourn. When Mary finally found Jesus outside, of the, and look at that, she's chasing after Jesus, and her friends are following her to follow Jesus. Anyways, finally found Jesus outside the village. She fell at his feet in tears and said, Lord, if only you had been here my brother would not have died. When Jesus looked at Mary and saw her weeping at his feet and all her friends were, who were with her grieving, he shuddered with emotion and was deeply moved with tenderness and compassion. So this is actually a really big key also in miracles and healing. Jesus is even moved by tenderness and compassion. And uh, the footnote when it says, you know, he shuddered with the emotion, Apparently, the uh, Greek word here is enebri mesato, can also mean indignant and stirred with anger. Was he angry at the mourners? Not at all. 
He was angry over the work of the devil in taking the life of his friend Lazarus. So I believe, and others believe, that sickness, disease, and death, really, is the work of the devil. The devil wants to kill, steal, and destroy. And so these are the works of the devil, and it says that Jesus uh, freed everyone that were oppressed from the devil. That, that's his mission, to free people from the oppression of the devil. So anyways, moving on. Lord, come with us, and we'll show you, they replied. Then tears streamed down Jesus' face. Imagine that Jesus weeps for us. He has compassion for us. He loves us. So even though he waited for God's command to come to, to Lazarus, Jesus had to wait, but he prophesied that it would give God glory. And he still weeps. He still went through that emotional process of compassion. Seeing Jesus weep caused many of the mourners to say, Look how much he loved Lazarus. Yet others said, Isn't this the one who opens blind eyes? Why didn't he do something to keep Lazarus from dying? Again, human thinking. This is how we think. Then Jesus, with intense emotions, came to the tomb, a cave with a stone placed over its entrance. Jesus told them, Roll away the stone. Then Martha said, But Lord, it's been four days since he died. By now his body is already decomposing. Jesus looked at her and said, Didn't I tell you that if you will believe in me, you will see God unveil his power? So they rolled away the heavy stone. Jesus gazed into heaven and said, Father, thank you. Now he's praying. Thank you that you have heard my prayer, for you listen to every word I speak. Now so that these who stand here with me will believe that you have sent me to the earth as your messenger, I will use the power you have given me. Then with a loud voice, Jesus shouted with authority, Lazarus, come out of the tomb. Then in front of everyone, Lazarus, who had died four days earlier, slowly hobbled out. He still had grave clothes tightly wrapped around his hands and feet and covering his face. Jesus said to them, unwrap him and let him loose. From that day forward, many of those who had come to visit Mary believed in him, for they had seen with him, seen with their own eyes this amazing miracle. But few went back to inform the Pharisees about what Jesus had done. And then he goes into a whole debacle with the Pharisees again. But you see how Jesus was so moved with compassion, with emotions. He even wept. He still waited on the Lord for his command to do what the Father's will. And then Jesus prayed to the Father, showing as well um, what, what it would be. Um, I think it's in another place in another part of the gospel that uh, that it was there's a loud voice, a loud voice that came from heaven, and uh, I believe even God the Father spoke in that moment. So it's in a, it's in another place, but this is very powerful to uh, recognize and acknowledge Jesus Christ is the resurrection and He is trustworthy, even though our minds always stuck go back to earthly mindedness and our limited thinking. Jesus is always thinking way ahead um, and he also is moved with compassion he has he he empathizes with us and he knows what we're going through um, and so he wants to bless us with resurrection power with resurrection life because he is the resurrection and i hope this encourages you and god bless i will see you next time coffee and jesus peace